But I want to share some things because uh, last week we talked about I'm in a fight trying to keep it together. And uh, we, we ended that on a jubilee note. And the Bible talks about this. Lucretia, my baby girl, it's good to see her. We had not sat down and ate. Somebody give God a praise for her and her babies and family. Uh, we talked about, and the Bible talks about how when you receive the word, you receive it with joy. That's kind of like a bounce up here on the stage. You receive the word with joy, but when you leave, when you come out of the presence of all of the shrimp that's in the house, you know there's shrimp not in numbers, but there's shrimp in unity. You can have a whole lot of folks with you in your circle, but if they not for you, I, I can't hear nobody right now. If they not for you, all you have is traffic and people that are in your way. I'm already ministering right now, and so it's very important to know who's around you. It's very important to know who's around you. When you're going through a crisis, it's very important to know who's around you. Jesus had the 5,000. Y'all ain't talking to me. And plus, the Bible says, not counting the children and the women, but just 5,000 men, the children and the women, he fed them, and then he had leftovers. And some of you worrying about your five family members. But I'm just going to prophesy right here. There shall be leftovers. You will have money for next month. I'm declaring a debt-free anointing on your life. This is a sidebar. As a prophet, I'm just releasing this. And you've been making it from month to month, from paycheck to paycheck. But I declare you're getting ready to have an increase. Oh, oh, oh my God. And you're going to have, I receive it, you're going to have enough, not just for the month, but you're going to have overflow. Somebody shout overflow in the house. And it's getting ready to happen. That crowd could not stay with Jesus because many of them was there for the fishes and the loaves. And notice this, he told the disciples, to set them in order. Whenever God is getting ready to bless you, he commands order to be in your life. I'm already, I'm Holy Ghost, I'm not even. And so he says, set them in order. Because many of you know that when you used to go to school and you was in the lunch line, if you got out of line, you had to go to the back of the line. But he says, set them in order. Some of you, you're getting ready to see the increase just by following the orders of God. Because the Bible says a good man's steps, they are ordered by the Lord. Look at somebody say, I'm ordered to be in the place that I'm in right now. It may not be where I want to be. It may not feel good right now, but I've been ordered to be here. He released the blessings to the multitude. But anybody can come when you're feeding them. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Anybody will surround you when you're supporting the habits, when you're footing the bill, when you're putting the gas in, and all they're doing is riding. They're not ride or dies. They're just riding for the joy ride. Until they put some skin in the game. They just ride it. And you don't know when it's all good. Who's really with you. It's when it's bad. It's when it don't feel good. It, it's when it, it looks like your life is jacked up. To really know who's really with you. I don't 
don't mind you applauding when I sing a good song, but I need you to applaud when I miss a note. Why, why God, you're telling me this? Because God is getting ready to bless some of you and you're wondering why some of your closest people are moving out of the way. They're moving out of your life. It's because of what God is getting ready to release. He's not going to let them mooch off you in this next seat. Somebody shout, it's getting ready to happen. So, he had the 5,000, he had the 70. They begin to leave when it got hard. Then he had 12. And he looked at them and asked them, are y'all going to leave me too? It's okay to ask folks if you're ready to hit the road. Because this kid ready to get hard. But if I can endure the hardness as a good soldier I'm going to get paid for every warfare every trial every temptation everything that I overcame somebody shout God shall reward me Peter said I'm going to put it in my language we got too much skin in the game we gave up everything to follow you where are we going to go? Jesus prophesied to them and said, not only will you receive your rewards in heaven, this was about for 50 of y'all, maybe it's more, I don't know, but he said, you're going to receive your reward while you're down here on the earth. I'm not just going to wait to get blessed when I get to heaven. I'm going to get blessed while I'm down here. May I say that your struggle is over because God is getting ready to bless you well, they're going to wonder, how did it happen? Somebody's getting ready to have a God did it testimony. Come on, somebody say, God did it. Who blowed on your business and blessed it? God did it. Who blessed your family so rich? God did it. Who healed your body and healed your mind? God, I wish I had a church right about now. God did it. Woo! God did it. God did it. God did it. It looked like it was over, but God did it. He gets the glory. Catch this, but I get to tell the story. Because you're going to live to see it happen. So here it is. Y'all be seated. I'm just prophesying and sharing the word of the Lord today. And so here it is, mother. The 70, the 5,000 left, the 70 left, the 12. But then when it was time for him to go into the inner circles to pray about what was to come, you can't take everybody with you. I know you want to have 30 prayer partners. But let me tell you something. All of them ain't praying for you. Some of them is praying on you. And you can't tell your business to everybody. Because everybody is not for you. They just die for the tea. Y'all ain't talking back to me in here. But he took Peter, James, and John. He took them and he prayed, and he said, pray with me. Because he was at the place of Gethsemane. Had to make a decision whether or not it would be God's will or his will. And he checked on them, just like I asked the intercessor team sometime, Pastor Tom Pro, are they praying? <laughs> Did you give them the message? <laughs> Because we want somebody to pray with us, mother. 
Jesus wanted prayer. Surely you need it. <laughs> Checked on them, they were asleep. Woke them up, went back to pray. Checked on them again, they were asleep. I don't know how many times he checked on them, but after he got his breakthrough, he went back and he told them, sleep on them. But watch. See, we have to be on alert in this day. We got to watch and pray. He was telling them, you couldn't pray with me for one hour, but you better wake up and pray for yourself. Y'all ain't talking back to me right now. Because it's coming your way. I wish I had a witness. The trial is going to come your way. And you have to have a yes in your spirit. And so today I come back to tell you this is how we fight. Somebody shout, this is how we fight. We're fighting with everything, trying Elder Tally to keep it together. Fighting with everything. Trying to keep it together. But the problem is where defeat comes in is not knowing how you fight. There's a correct way of fighting and then there's a way of fighting that you just hoping you hit. You know, I come from the hood and so, you know, there are some people, you know, some guys fight like a girl. <laughs> they hoping, don't laugh too much, they might be sitting next to you. <laughs> close their eyes. Alexander, they just close. Just That's a dangerous person now to fight if you don't know how to fight. And so Lashonda, they just swing and they close their eyes and they hoping they hit their target. But then there are some that knows how. They are looking at their target. Y'all gonna catch me after a while. Because some people in the spirit, you fighting like this. And you hoping you hit. But when you learn how to take your stance, when you know how to hit your target in prayer, you're not gonna hope to hit the enemy. You're gonna hit the enemy. I wish I had a choice right about now. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to hit the target. My prayers will work. Not just going to be swinging at the air. I'm going to pray with intentions. I'm going to pray with a target. I'm, I'm going to reach the mark. I wish I had a church right about now. I'm not going to halfway pray. That halfway praying, because let me say this. Y'all let me see that. We're going to get there. The halfway praying is, is that praying where I believe but because it's unbelievable. I just don't believe. And, and you could believe God for everybody else. But when it's real, can you believe God for yourself? Oh, I'm going to minister this morning because we got a whole lot of belief. And it's easy for you to believe God for my healing. But when you get the report, can you believe God for your healing? That man, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. And, and if you're going to crucify him, let me tell you something. There's going to come a time in your life. You're going to have some doubt why you believe in. I wish I had a church right. God, will I ever get out of this? God, will you ever deliver me? God, will it ever change? God, what are you doing? God, where are you? I believe, but help my unbelief. And God is so gracious, so cold. Jesus, he delivered the boy even while he had belief. 
But unbelief, sometimes he'll help you while you're in doubt. And he'll do the miracle anyway. Somebody shout, he's going to do it anyway. There are things he did for me where I, I just couldn't believe. I'm like, that's those unbelievable prayers that get answered. Because the Bible says, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, I wish I had a word, church, that he is God. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently, not halfway, not, not passive, but they diligently seek him. Not distracted in your prayers, but you got your focus on that you are driving in the affection fervent prayer of a righteous man a valid much I'm not playing with this I'm diligently seeking him going after him that's when you don't allow distractions to come in your life I'm going after him it may be a little fear in my heart but I'm going after him it may not be the way I want it to be, and it may have been a long time, but I'm going after him. When will we get the faith that the woman with the issue of blood had, where she spent all her money, and she went to all the physicians, and none of them could do nothing for him, for her, but she said within herself, some of y'all need to go back to looking in the mirror and talking to yourself and tell yourself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. I don't just want to be healed, I want to be whole. I don't just want some of my stuff back, I want all of mine. I want it all back. Somebody shout, I want it all back. And what was no good to me, I want something new to replace it. I wish I had a church right about now. Hallelujah. Some of the stuff you can tell the devil to keep it, you don't want it. But there are some things. I want it all back. You can't be passive. You can't be all passive. It's okay to cry. Y'all did a good job. Listen, there'll come a time you're going to have to dry your tears. Get, get out there on the battlefield. Say, devil, you, you want to fight? Okay, come on. Because the Bible says the kingdom, I wish I had a church, suffered violence. But the violence, I wish I had about 10 violent folks, take it by force. Is it anybody here you going to take what belongs to you? the spiritual realm we have to know how to fight because this fight is real and, and understand this he's not just after your promise he's really not after the promise he's after your mind so you won't enjoy the promise even if you get the promise somebody say the devil can't have my mind we declared in the word last week that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Every evil imagination. Stop letting the devil run through your mind and not paying rent. I wish I had somebody in here. And lying to you and, and setting up camp and squatting in your place because he want to take ownership of your mind. He wants to torment you in your mind. He don't want you to believe that your change is going to come. He don't want you to believe that you're going to win the fight that you're in. He wants you to think that you are already defeated, but I'm so glad that I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory because God have already given me victory. Somebody shout victory. Somebody say the battle is already won. The enemy know he can't defeat you because you got too much God on the inside of you. Glory to his name. He know he can't defeat you 
because you got too much God on the inside of you. But what he wants you to do is surrender under his authority and power. But I wish I had some believers in here that say, I will not quit. I will not surrender. I will not give up my right. I, not, I will not give up my right for peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Ghost. But I will fight. This is how we fight. Some of you, you're not dressed for warfare. Hallelujah. Say, so put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. We're living in a time you can't put half of the garment on. You can't have faith without the word. You need the helmet of salvation. Y'all ain't going to talk to me right now. Yeah. Glory to his name. I thought y'all would enjoy the word. Do you want the word or you want Bible? Do you want Bible or you want Bible? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to put the whole arm on. You can't go to war halfway dressed. You can't go to war wearing somebody else's armor. David said, you saw, I can't wear this. This don't fit me. Oh, but if I can just take the name of Jesus with me, all I need is a sling and a rock. Some of y'all get ready to kill Goliath because you get ready to fight the right way. Hallelujah. Somebody say, that don't fit me. When Peter pulled that sword out, are y'all enjoying this or it's time to quit? I quit. Y'all, I will quit. God bless y'all. See you next week. But I guarantee you, if you hear what I'm saying, you will not let the devil whoop you when you leave this place today. Woo! He will not defeat you in your mind. He will not defeat you in your family. He will not defeat you in your finances. But look at somebody and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice. And I will be glad in. Where are my glad people at? Open up your mouth and say, yes, Lord. lost a lot of fights yeah. when I was learning how to fight y'all yeah. don't hear me in here Amen. I'm not lying I got people that can back this up <laughs> I lost a whole lot of fights nose bleeding eyes swole when I learned how to fight I was learning by being beaten y'all don't hear me in here but when I learned how to fight, I never was a bully. But I couldn't stand bullies. Y'all don't hit me in here. And when I learned how to fight, I wanted to fight the bully. I wanted the baddest. I want, I'll say ninja and I don't want to offend nobody. I wanted the baddest. And I would take up for those that was bullied. And, and I had a left hand. I broke it. I never got it fixed. But I, I would take up for those that couldn't fight for themselves. And from that day, this is real truth. I don't have to lie to you. I'm in the house of the Lord. I never lost another fight. I didn't care how big they was. I didn't care how bad they was. Because when we got in the fight, oh yeah, it was on. Somebody is not walking away. And it's not going to be me. I'm getting up from here. See, the devil need to know that you've been fighting all your life. And though the fight may be hot right now, you ain't going to get up. You ain't going to quit. You ain't going to stop. You're going to keep on hitting the mark. You're going to keep on praying. You're going to keep on praising. You're going to keep on believing. 
Hallelujah. And so we have to know that sometimes this battle is not ours. Some battles belong to the Lord. But we got to know when we are fighting against God. Hallelujah. We are binding the devil <laughs> instead of praising God. Yes. Do you hear me? You got sun, you got rain all on your glasses. Yeah. yeah. Tears Them tears of joy. That's 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 why I say that's rain. That's yeah. rain. It's getting ready to happen. <laughs> Somebody give God a praise for him. But I declare a bonus in your life and you ain't even asking for it. Yes. Glory to us now. Yeah. So where did I stop at? <laughs> Which thing? I want to make sure y'all listen. Because sometimes you're fighting against God instead of working with God. And my time is up, but you have God influence, you have people influence, and you have demonic influence. You have God influence, you have people influence, and you have demonic influence. It's always good when God can influence you. Sometimes it's good when people can influence you because all people are not good influence. Come on, somebody say, God, give me the spirit to discern what's good and what's bad. Is it a good influence or a bad? And then you have demonic influence. This thing is demonic. And it has to be broken in the spirit realm. Why you're standing all over the field? This is how we fight. We have weapons that we fight with. As a church, Sister Samara, we prayed for you, gave a shout out to you and your family. Y'all did an excellent job yesterday. Yesterday, give God a praise for <laughs> Sister Samara wanted to make sure her mama was saved and in the right place with God. have weapons that have not been released because you don't know what you really have the Bible says that your voice is a weapon when they marched around the walls hallelujah the walls fell when they shouted. But it was because of the obedience that they marched. And they didn't open their mouth until it was time. They shouted and the walls came down. I'll preach this some other time. You also have weapons in your feet. Somebody say, weapon? weapon I will take I'm going to cause war against you your seed and the serpent and the hill of your feet <laughs> shall bruise I'm my, I love old sheet I'm my, some of y'all ain't getting this tell somebody my heel is anointed to bruise the head of the enemy he may strike my heel but I'm going to bruise his head some of y'all need to start bruising the enemy's head. I know it sounds crazy.
crazy and look crazy, but your foot is a weapon. To every place, the sole of your feet is a tread upon. I'll give it to you. Hallelujah. Somebody say weapons. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Are y'all ready for this? Clear your hands for a minute. Because your hands is a weapon. If you have something in your hands, take, just sit it down. Just hold your hands out and look at the, the weapons of your hands. The Bible says, I believe it's in Genesis somewhere, that as the clapping of your hands. Glory to the name of God. Yeah, that's my clapping church. You control the head, the neck of the enemy. As you clap your hands, all ye people, you're not applauding. You are in warfare. When you clap your hands, huh? glory to his name. Hold the music just for a minute. Let me hear you clap your hands. You're not applauding. You're going in warfare. You ain't got to say a word but the clapping up your hands. Woo! Huh? Glory! Some of y'all need to just start clapping your hands when you feel the warfare intention in an intensified. Just start clapping your hands. And when they ask you, what are you doing? Say, I'm going in war. they can't see it coming and some of y'all the enemy know that you're a sitting target and you need to confuse your enemy when you're crying you ought to start clapping when you're hurting you ought to start clapping and the enemy wonder how you doing what you doing it is the joy of the Lord that's my strength the more you clap the more he'll come in somebody shout and clap your hand Are you standing and your hands lifted up? He's worthy to be praised. Let me hear you open your mouth and say, Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Yes, Lord. Praise. Let me hear you say, Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to Come on, let me hear you say, Praise Him. Praise Everybody ought to pray. If you're in here, you want to be saved, come down now. Praise him. Oh, praise him. Jesus. Bless his Savior. He's worthy. Come on, I need to hear you from the rising of the sun. Until the going down of Say it like you believe it. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. If you need prayer, come right now. Oh, praise him. Give them praise them. Come on, somebody praise them. Come on, my sister. I know as many of you in here, you need to be down at this altar. 
but I'm making the call. You've been in a fight. And it's time for you to start winning the fight.